welcome back to my session of sap for beginners now today we are actually talking about one important parameter of sap which is writing above program so uh, this is chapter 12 i will encourage all people to study other chapters chapter 1 to 11 where i have actually explained different functional modules different technical modules what are the do's and don'ts for the beginners actually this video i prepared some time back for talking to a few fresh abapers and i wanted to give them a glimpse what are the technical and the behavioral skill these people should have to get employed in the market so some of the above skill which are important for us but and for any new uh, consultant when they get uh, get into a job interview the questions what are being asked those i have captured over here difficulties they may face while writing program or while dealing with customer so i would request you to go through this session end to end and do let me know your comment on the uh, on the comment box i have also given some reference to some of the project where i was associated but those references are some of the references i will try to put into the description module so that if you click that you can get that uh, portion of it so before starting the discussion i would like to add the disclaimer that i am not a above trained person and the presentation is actually based on my numerous project management experience the uh, second point is the example used in this presentation are based on my real life case study in different projects where i was involved either as project manager or a member of the team some of the developments which i have described here and i am neither i am a owner nor i have written the code i have actually given the conception and based on the conception there are abapers and there are technical leads who have developed those programs any resemblance to any code written by anyone is quite coincidental i do not have any intention to claim the same at all and i do not want to get into a copyright issue at all in that case the name and time of the projects are deliberately changed to avoid identification and people who are associated with me for past 30 30 years they will probably able to understand some of the projects because they may be part of the journey but there are i have as far as possible i have concealed the identification of those projects many diagram illustration i have taken either from help.sap.com or from sap blog so they are available publicly in internet so it is not new for many of you this course initially was made for a close group of students who were learning above and ready to enter industry so the senior abapers if they go through this program they may find something something uh, repetitive but even for them also some amount of my own experience or my own suggestion i have included in the program i have in other videos i have given my introduction earlier so i do not want to repeat it again only i want to tell you that in case you wanted to have some more idea from sap or any other it related subject you can reach me anytime at ceo at the rate that's itss.in email id now what is the objective of the session this session is targeted to the new learners of ABAP program and how they can hone their skill for better job prospect. The session deals with a lot of examples and anecdotes which will be useful for the junior developers and senior developers as well. What is the agenda of the session? Agenda will be ABAP definition and key components, SAP tables and impact on ABAP, necessary skills for new joiners, change control, case study, and use of ABAP in industry. So let's start the program. Uh, uh, let me make it in the presentation mode. So uh, first way, as I explained into the chapter two, where I talked about the architecture of SAP, I just want to reiterate the fact that SAP has a three-tier architecture. 
there is a dedicated rdbms uh, database layer and the database actually stored lot of information in the forms of tables and in the forms of rows and columns and then those database layer is supported by an application layer now in application layer is the layer where our normal above programs are written so what is the necessity necessity of writing an above program sap has standard best practices those best practices are supposed to be followed in most of the industry most of the business process but depending upon the necessity or requirement specific to a particular business we need to do little tweaking or we need to develop a custom program we may have to develop a custom transaction some develop some report now when we do all these things sap has a dedicated language which is abap language and therefore they write program in that now whatever program an abapper is writing they are writing in this application layer and one has to really be very mindful of writing the program in such a way that there is not a unnecessarily true and fro database fetching or database uh, database accessing activity because the more amount of database fetching activity happen the it will actually slow down your system and the quality of the abap program will suffer and whenever the database uh, is whenever the program is asking any data to be brought from the from the database the the program will be brought that will be processed in the application layer and the result will be shown into the sap gui which is actually loaded into the client's uh, machine and which is called the presentation layer so as a abapper you must remember that sap has a three tier architecture and you should be mindful of writing program in such a way that same information should not be repetitively brought from the database next we need to go uh, i need to go the basic definition of abap so what is abap abap in a in a definition of the wikipedia definition it is advanced business application programming it is actually a very high level programming language and it has uh, it is a proprietary software of sap and sap ag make all their modules in the proprietary software and the advantage is that in this software you can write program into english language actually and why it is called abap 4 because the when sap started they started different version of program and as of now this is the fourth generation language hence it is called abap 4 abap language syntax is very similar to our earlier cobol programming so people who are who are aware of the cobol programming which is quite old now i am sure the new generation programmer who are attending the session might have not got the experience of organizing or writing anything in cobol people of my age had the opportunity we worked in fortran and cobol all these thing in many years back many decades back in fact so abap is similar to that cobol programming now uh, when abap was developed tra traditionally it was developed for developing reports actually when sap r2 was there sap release 2 then abap was released for the uh, report development and and uh, and in those days the main module which sap was using was actually financial accounting and material management so abap was used for that purpose and also abap has the advantage it supports the concept of logical database that are, that are used for high level abstraction and the basic database level so if you want some logical database abap can be used for that purpose also now the question what uh, i keep on asking people or people ask me rather that what are the basic skills what actually are uh, necessary for a person to be a abap programmer now i have uh, organized many uh, interview session and i have also taken interview of many abapers for the various of the projects and based on my experience and based on my knowledge what i actually wanted to tell you that you should you must know the abap development workbench abap dictionary abap workflows you should know adobe form and the module pool program sap standard forms you should be able to write bapis enhancement framework 
remote functional call bodies i dog ali and above objects so what i will do this particular uh, portion of the requirement i will actually paste into the description uh, area of youtube so if you go there you will have a quick knowledge what are the skills you must have so in my opinion today after the hana has come you the cds view and the web dan pro knowledge and the above oops kind of knowledge above o skills those has become extremely important but more more so i personally feel if you even if you working for sap ecc your sap table knowledge of different modules are extremely critical and in few slides in my presentation i will actually talk about the different kind of tables which are used in different modules and how as a abapar you have the responsibility to know those tables and how to how to create if you have to create a new table what best policy you need to follow so this technical skill side purposely i added so that you can actually study when you are studying abap you can study these chapters and also practice some kind of hands on practice so that you become more marketable in the industry similarly i also wanted to tell you from the behavioral skill perspective you should have excellent analytical and logical problem solving skill and technological skill so <clears throat> you should be able to work in a global and virtual environment for past 2 years because of the corona even up before that there are many global projects come up and and in every case it is very difficult for a organization to send a abapar so normally what is done abapars are kept in one common pool and functional consultants travel and based on of their requirement the abap uh, functional specification documents they handed over to the abap pool so you should be able to work into the global uh, scenario which means as a abap programmer you should be flexible to work in their time zone and also effectively prioritize and execute the task in a high pressure environment and abapar should be able should have the ability to work autonomously in a fast paced and complex environment that means if any job is given you should take ownership you should be self motivated you should be some kind of you should be able to do the judgment with the ability to manage multiple priorities and should be able to finish that job within time if necessary you should be willing to travel globally because in some cases like for instance i was involved very recently in japan project and i took along with me four abapars it was a mega project and we needed abap support for the purpose of development at the also at the time of unit testing and the user acceptance testing so we did not want to depend on abapar who are based out of india we had a abap pool in india but some abapars we took with us so that you should be willing to abap to travel and under that situation you should be able to aware of relevant sops as per company policy because if you are working in uh, because if you are going through the job description then uh, that job description will actually ask you to follow some standard operating procedure and you should be able to follow that and similarly if you are doing on site job you should be comply with the company safety and quality policy at all times so these are some of the behavioral skill which an abapar should have when before making himself available for the interview or before available for the services no many questions uh, some people have asked me question what is the career path of an abapar so because this presentation is being uh, done to the people who are just joining the abap journey or maybe who are doing the study for the purpose of career development i wanted to draw a some kind of uh, some kind of road map for those people so when an abapar joins he normally joins as a junior developer and a junior developer has a job of developing some codes based on the guidance given by the senior developer or based on the fsd document which is handed over to them after the junior developer one person gets uh, gets enhanced or gets promoted to a senior developer 
senior developer has the capability of reading the functional functional specification document preparing the technical specification document guiding the junior developers how they are supposed to develop that and then they also senior developer will also have a necessity of uh, communicating with the solution architect or customer uh, customer representative customer spoke for understanding any changes which is required then the more senior person is the solution architect so solution architect uh, and technical lead these two positions sometime are actually mixed up in one position actually but they have different role altogether a solution architect is a person who has a wide knowledge of different modules in sap and also he or she should be able to design the above uh, schema in such a way that the most efficient above programming can be done based on that actually whereas the technical lead he will actually have to play the functional or business analyst role he should understand the sap system design configuration customization and translate it into designs and services to build a custom ux platform on top of sap the technical lead is expected to play the role of the product owner for the sap module of expertise own the design and delivery of consumer grade application while respecting the bounds of back end sap setup as a techno functional analyst understand business process built on s4 hana platform within the module of expertise and convert them into powerful custom application solution the technical lead should be able to implement a rapid prototyping or wireframing approach and deliver top shelf designs for the purpose of the ui and ux development he should be able to partner with the sap implementation team for module of expertise to understand the business process system setup and development so in my opinion technical lead is the person who is the highest into the into the above journey because beyond technical lead one can only become project manager and a project as a project manager you should have the overall idea of the all modules of sap the repercussion of the implementing some solution in sap and is impact with other modules and also you should be able to manage the project from the delivery perspective so technical lead is very senior person in some project depending upon the project's depth and project length technical lead and solution architects are merged into one post but it is very clear from junior developer somebody has to be senior developer move to solution architect and then he will become the technical lead the next slide i will talk little technically <clears throat> because i feel that use of tables are very important and one has to actually give be very aware of when you are actually using tables so in sap any table it we can be actually derived into two category index table and hash table while i don't want to go into the many technical detail in this session i am sure that those technical detail are available in other uh, course material where you will go through that or probably i can make another video where i can talk of only technical detail in above writing but here a little bit amount of technical detail i would like to tell you because when you are designing the table structure and also you are modifying or some existing table you are accessing you should know what is the fundamental tables are there so fundamentally there will be one standard table and in standard table the scan facility is given by the table scan key access you know it is linearly linearly key access is given and the access is given mainly by index whereas the <coughs> it is a non unique kind of access what you get here whereas in case of shorted table the search is always binary search and the access is unique or non unique where is if the table is a hash function table it will be the key access again and the uniqueness kind will be unique kind of table actually so when you are designing a table or creating a new table in sap you should very carefully design or think through whether it has to be a standard table shorted table and hash table because in different scenario or there is not all tables are good and they have got their own plus and minus point pros and cons depending upon the requirement of the object 
requirement of the system, you may have to design a table accordingly. In the next slide, I have taken a few uh, standard tables of FI module and MM module and uh, you can actually get into the particular module video and get detail of what are those modules does like there are some modules which are very critical if you are configuring the fi area or mm area and why i wanted to get into this discussion is i wanted you to know that if you are designing a complete system then this has to be merged or matched between different tables and give the solution so as a ABAPA, you should be very thorough about the different module tables and if you get an opportunity to work in any of the modules, you should to get into the module, understand the tables, what kind of key those items are used, what kind of uh, output these items are given, what are the type of functionality these modules, uh, these tables are expected to bring in, all those data, how the data is stored, if a data is, has to be kept or then in which way they have to be stored, those idea needs to be very carefully and categorically understood. So I am just giving in the next slide, I am just showing you that in case you want to merge. So for instance, I have shown you FI module and MM module table structure in the earlier slide. If there is any, I am just giving a case study. Suppose there is a case study where the purchase or inventorization uh, on the financials to be configured. So obviously you need to take data from MM as well as FI. Example, uh, example if you are working either in asset acquisition or those kind of activity and then you need to actually merge those tables and a common solution you need to bring into it actually. Similarly, if you are going to the SD area, in SD area you suppose you are doing a billing activity, then obviously some of the tables which are in SD and some of the tables which are in the FI, those need to be marked and the solution need to be brought into it actually. <clears throat> in the next slide, I wanted to talk about SAP Solution Manager. Solution Manager is a large chapter or large subject on its own, but it is important that some organization to manage the SDLC of the line the <clears throat> entire life cycle of the program they use solution manager so in the solution manager there is a opportunity where you can design the requirement of your uh, any change request or any program you can design that you can implement that and you can do some kind of after build and test function you can do that you can do the entire change control management in that and then as per the IT, ITLT process, you can do the IT service management, application operation, custom code management and upgrade management also. So solution manager is a SAP tool where the software code we are managing using that. And in some cases, the solution managers are used for the purpose of transporting the program to the production server. So it is better if you are a above you should do some kind of study of how to use a solution manager and what is their impact into the above program transporting to the program. Although transporting of the above program to the production, to the quality server or to the production server is a basis activity, but in most of the cases, basis does in conjunction with above and if above does not know the tool or does not know the way how they are done, it becomes a difficult proposition actually. So what are the standard uh, jobs of above Standard jobs and above is we are expected to do the ticket management. So suppose the tickets are raised, then uh, on a if the ticket depending upon the uh, depending upon the uh, functionality of the ticket, if it is a clear a above ticket or it is a change request ticket, then we are supposed to do the analyze the requirement. We are supposed to prepare the functional specifications are prepared by the functional consultant. Technical specifications are done by the MAPERS. We are supposed to do some kind of impact analysis of that. Then the code development has to be done by us. Then system integration test has to be done. So in the system integration test, so I have missed on line here. Sorry for that. You should. You are supposed to do unit test there. So after development, there has to be a unit test also. 
so in the unit test you should be able to do the uh, every module wise testing and then you are supposed to do a system integration test where all modules put together you are supposed to do the testing and after the system integration test is thorough you have done the impact analysis you are uh, then you will transfer this transport this program to the quality system and you will ask your users to do a thorough user acceptance test so during user acceptance test we are uh, the functional consultant will provide the different scenarios and those scenarios need to be completely tested and if it is okay then we can request the basis team to transport that to the production system so as a abapar from the beginning of the analyze requirement till uat you have lot of work to do even during uat also many of the cases it has been found that some changes are required some additional enhancements are coming up so as a abapar you are supposed to work on those areas as well actually and once they are transporting to the production system then as a abapar you do not have much of role because then the production system will work in case there is some issue then the new ticket will be raised actually so previously i spoke about the solution manager you actually should think of the how the changes are managed in the sap system so how changes are not managed so if you are doing the change the first thing first somebody has to document that what are the change required after documenting there has to be some kind of assessment that if the change is really required because you know that all changes cost money cost time cost effort so changes must be done if there is a clear business benefit changes has to be authorized by the appropriate authority many of the time it may happen that the changes are haphazardly done only to discover that some scenario was not considered and changes has to be reverted so it is a quite uh, wastage of time for the organization as they are wasting time for the functional consultant from the abapar and also the solution architects therefore the assessment is extremely important and not only that at some stage when you are doing the change there has to be a impact what is the changes impact on the other system because uh, you need to think that those changes actually are not independent sap is extremely integrated system as i explained in chapter 3 and chapter 4 sap is extremely integrated system so in case any changes done any particular module by the use of system of above that will definitely have an impact to other system also so the successful abapar when he will write a program he will be a he will be a member of the change uh, change control process he will know that why the changes done what are the optimum changes how they can be done what are the objective of the changes what are the best thing can be done without the changes being done also and that is the role of the abapar we expect to be done i have actually wanted to take an example of the business blueprint document but business blueprint document has actually why i have taken out this this i have taken from one of my project and you can see that in the business blueprint document there is one paragraph where the whatever the reports are uh, required those are mentioned so there will be normally what happens there is a as is process where in the legacy system some reports they are using those reports descriptions are given and when we are going into sap then what kind of resource required what kind of report required what are the above changes required because of those reports what are the above efforts are required those has to be captured so business blueprint document so you can see the importance of above where from the business blueprint document which is the start document from the sap above sir being identified actually <clears throat> so then the question comes many a time what are the typical kind of transaction where the customization is needed so i just wanted to uh, write down a few there may be many cases where customization is needed customization needed where there are uh, any kind of mass transaction is required like you want a live bulk production uh, confirmation to be done bulk payment cycle to be done bulk data entry to be done very rarely sap gives all the solution for the bulk mode so customization is required there are many cases there is a standard program and we want to extend the standard program we need to do the customization as i have shown you earlier like fi mm sdfi 
if the two different modules need to be linked and a new report has to be developed like for instance if there is a standard let's assume there is a standard report called pending order report and in pending order report you also need to put some kind of profitability sense to it definitely the standard sd report won't help you so some amount of sd and fi has to be taken into that and those things are also uh, those customizations will be required there are custom report which are required by modifying the standard report any transaction which needs to be made user friendly then customization is required interface between legacy and sap system customization will be required current manual business process suppose there is a manual something is being done that is to be automated then you will require the customization typical export and import and paperwork uh, so suppose export import for, of any organization they need lot of paperwork now if you want to automate those paperwork customization will be required account payable that account payable means i explained in the p2p category account payable is actually the paying the vendor the money what he owes to us so for that many a time the standard transaction does not suffice and therefore we may have to do the customization any kind of different variant of the new reports or a new report to be measured or some user exit to be written customization will be required bulk master data upload or bulk transaction data management also will call for customization so i have given some case study where i have talked about a pending sales order report this requirement was actually for a stainless steel manufacturing company where the uh, sales pending sales order report was not getting sufficient as the productions were involving many parts and they wanted a pending sales order linked with each profit center and customer and dealer country so therefore those standard report did not provide all the detail so therefore we had to make a uh, pending sales order report and for that as usual we had three category one we and we discuss what is the as is report is there what is to be report then functional consultant came up they prepared the business requirement document and the fs document and then it came to the abap who make the technical solution document design document development identify the table which will be affected make the schema and then finally did the coding and uh, all these uh, details are actually available in one of the google document so if possible i will put that google document to my uh, to my the to the link of the description so that you can be able to access that actually another important skill for evapor in my opinion is that you should be able to have a very strong uh, strong sense of debugging a existing program so debugging is something which is necessary for us to identify if there is any error is happening or there is some program is not working it is getting stopped or getting aborted then somebody has to do the debug there are methods available for doing the debugging depending upon the modules but as a abapar and functional consultant both debugging is very important skill to learn there are another area which is important for abapars we should know how to tune the abap program so it may necessary for the for removing the performance bottleneck for your own program or maybe the earlier performance uh, earlier program written by someone you need to remove the uh, performance uh, you need to improve the performance then you need to do the abap tuning so this is for the efficient way of abap management skill to tune existing program better performance less storage efficient lb report run in it's also important for us to consider that under which situation where abap has to be written and where standard sap has to be followed because there has to be a trade off right sap has adopted their best practices for any business after 30 years of their research work and almost all business process which are used in that particular industry for that sap has released their notes one of the best parameter one of the best way you can run sap is if you adopt those best practices in your business and you do not do lot of changes to that actually when we are doing customization 
हाउस एवर गुड एवेपर हाउस एवर गुड प्रोग्रामर और हाउस एवर गुड फंक्शनल कंसल्टेंट वी आर वी एक्चुअली डू नॉट एनालाइज और जज द एग्जैक्ट इम्पैक्ट ऑन मेनी टेबल्स हुई आर नॉट इजिली एक्सेसिबल बाई आवर कॉमन आइडिया एंड देर फॉर टू मेनी कस्टमाइजेशन एक्चुअली किल्स द बेनिफिट हुई एस ए पी हैज ब्रॉट इन सो uh so one has to be a little um one has to be little thoughtful before changing any sap's best practice and introduce a customized program however only if the pip the people who are using sap in the plant or in the organization declares that the sap best practices are not possible to be adopted in their industry after all kind of try and for that purpose i showed in the previous slide that change control board that change control board is a must and for all all you know change control board should be headed by one of the senior most member of the organization who has to take ownership of the change which are being done and also as a abapar it is our responsibility to see from time to time the way we write the program we need to tune it we need to do the program tuning we need to do some kind of purging the unused code we also need to cleanse the system where the custom report which are developed and not being used we need to be on toes and look into the program which has been developed from time to time because because in my personal opinion writing above and using standards in if you compare both of them as much you can use the standard it is best for the business to go on i will i will dedicate two slides on s4 hana because s4 hana is now uh, in thing for sap uh, and so therefore the above uh, students who are attending this course they will definitely be exposed to interview questions pertaining to s4 hana so s4 hana offers much more for the simplification of the abap language this abap application development has been lot of optimization has been automatically done in s4 hana and uh, in s4 hana the majority of the uh, layers are through sap fury apps so therefore abap programming model for sap fury apps is a must in s4 hana one has to have that knowledge there uh, eclipse is uh, giving the Uh, opportunity for the aba programmer to have more efficient in developing their system and then advanced quality assurance tools and custom code adoption in s4 hana is there and uh, there has to be real time events like for instance there are lot of iot projects are coming on lot of machine to machine communication projects are going on and they will require because s4 hana offers in memory computing they will require a easy integration with those uh, non sap system and sap system and therefore abap programmer in s4 hana will have a bigger role to play in all those areas actually so in my opinion interface development and it has to be beyond idoc and body and it has to be here where people should be having knowledge of integrating using using the hci or those kind of thing also and uh, so if you really see the difference which is happening uh, in s4 in s4 hana that s4 hana is not only just a database but also it is giving the very powerful benefit one benefit is that raw row and column data store the the data compression is happening it is also supporting oltp and olap patterns in one application the in memory computing is Uh, actually avoiding unnecessary movement of huge data volume and therefore the performance is increasing and the data intensive calculation which are where the lot of data analysis is required lot of data handling is required using the it is becoming easier in s4 hana so new program is actually also there you know in s4 hana there are two they are very critically given one is application layer one is data layer so the in the application layer the the data intensive and computation we are actually doing in the application layer and the data intensive operation we are actually pushing towards data layer 
So when somebody is learning about for S4 HANA, these small points need to be taken into consideration. So once we are actually getting into above for S4 HANA, one of the major investment areas is the RESTful application program or RAP. So RAP is the evolutionary successor of the above programming model for SAP Fury. It includes essential extension of above language development tool framework which enables the efficient end-to-end -end development of intrinsically SAP HANA optimized SAP Fury application and web services. And after RESTful application, in total Eclipse, uh, the FCP above platform is giving a very improved kind of body definition support and also it is developing new views using the CDS view. CDS view is definitely are the successor of CDS DDIC based views and therefore definitely double framework and all other activity the view creation is much easier. So you know in S4 HANA one of the plus point is that the BI is given and S4 HANA itself is capable of creating so much amount of visual analytics that many of the BI, many of the application which you are doing through BI those are taken here actually. So CDS view is going to give them that, that benefit. Additional enrichment in the connectivity area is the support for advanced message queuing protocol. Advanced message queuing protocol was established to support robust and asynchronous messaging between various applications. And the above platform 2020 provides an API to implement AMQP clients for above application. Uh, Fury already I have spoken and tools Eclipse is giving the benefit to that and therefore to the S4 HANA is actually is going to be a new era for the ABAPERS to learn for. At the end uh, I have added this slide just to addressing to the beginners. I told earlier that this uh, presentation I made when I was speaking to a group of ABAPERS so because they are very very new and they were starting their life in above so I shared some of my thought process to them and I am actually trying to add those slides for you as well. So ABAP programmer is normally advised to have very good grip on functional module understanding. <clears throat> if you get an opportunity to know the SD module, PP module, FI module and develop ABAP in particular those modules definitely that's a plus point so go get into this do dig dive understand after deep dive understand the tables where we are uh, using which kind of data what are necessary for the business that will help you in the long run i advise about programmers not to write program blindly actually it is better that if they get the glimpses of the business understand the business need and then accordingly design the program so that the overall schema becomes much more attractive to the end user. Whenever you are writing a program, if you have the knowledge of optimizing the program, it is better you ensure the programs are optimized after your writing is over. And optimization actually helped a lot because it will improve the performance of the system and as it will make you a better evaporator as well. Now before giving for UAT, you should give the unit test, you should do the uh, system integration test thoroughly. Please understand, we have a responsibility of making our system, system as much uh, perfect as possible before giving somebody for doing some kind of user acceptance testing. So I suggest that test thoroughly before you provide for the UAT. <clears throat> and uh, when the UAT is done, you need to ask functional consultants to prepare the uh, scenario, the test scenario and all test scenarios are to be picked up suitably and they have to be tested in all detail because the more testing is done, your uh, more kind of changes or more kind of bugs can be found out and those will be helpful in the long way while the program is transported to the production system. And last but not the least, it is important for you to enhance your ABAP skill on regular basis. Please keep a target at least every month, learn something new. ABAP dictionary or ABAP development is a huge, it's like an ocean. You have lot many things to learn and if you target that, you will learn everything in the beginning itself that may not happen. So it is advisable that you enhance your ABAP skill regularly. 
I will also suggest that do the documentation, learn how to do the documentation. I have seen good ABAP programmer in my life after the entire project is over. They actually spend time at least two to three days to complete the documentation. Every program or every blog what they write, they put a code, uh, they put a uh, inverted comma uh, beside the program, write the reason why that is developed, why the, what was the connection between the FSD and the technical specification. So you need to know all these things if you are going to improve in the ABAP programming because your program when it is handed over to another ABAPer, he or she should find it easy to tackle that program. That should be the objective. So these are something I thought for the ABAPers I will say this program. I thank you very much for joining me the session. In case you have still got question, you can reach me out in the following coordinate. Whatever I am, as I told you earlier, I am not a ABAPer, but I have been associated with SAP from 1998. So based on my ex experience in handling different SAP implementation, probably I will be able to give you some kind of guidance. And also uh, we keep on hiring ABAP programmer uh, quite often in our organization or my partner's company. See if any of you feel that you also want to work with us, you can also reach us when there is the opportunity. We, can, we will get back to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.